151st contact. Monday, October 12, 1981, 12.07 am. Billy says man, you came back fairly quickly. Only on Saturday, we had a contact together. What brings you here so soon? Quetzal says my coming is of urgency because there are some other unpleasant matters at hand which could lead once more to signs of collapse in the center and, thus, among the group members. It is very regrettable that such incidents appear over and over again when new members are chosen. This time, it concerns Thomas, for whom I already had to include a rebuke. In anticipation that he would rebel against the issued orders and ordinal rules, I have striven since Saturday morning around a detailed inspection of him. It became apparent that he rebels against the orders and wants to draw near to you with an appropriate document in the course of today. You might receive this letter from him, which you should not deal with, however, but hand this over to the group persons responsible, thus, the board of directors of the group, which is competent and responsible for this. The board of directors has to take this important matter to hand and make it clear to Thomas that he is in the wrong and that he cannot continue to exist in this manner as a group member. Exceptions can be approved no more, not even for him, consequently, he also has to insert himself into the given ordinal rules. One exception immediately leads to the next exception and the order has already been broken again. We have, both ourselves and also the long-standing group members, gathered enough experiences to know that this is really so. One single exception would inevitably lead back to the beginning of a new form of destruction, which is why none can be admitted. Thomas is of the erroneous assumption that he has special rights for himself because he has placed himself in a certain closer connection with K, nevertheless, he must realize what the ordinal rules mean for all those who are to be considered as group members or as interested parties of the teachings, etc. The ordinal rules in the house rules also apply to him, so his ideas that he wants to present to you are not acceptable that he only wants to visit the center during the visiting time on Tuesday in order to be with K. This also concerns the idea that he could spend each Friday night to Saturday sleeping with K, without completing the agreed night watch, and then work on Saturday morning. He is a core group member, and as such, he is incorporated into the regulations of the group and, thus, into the statutes and the ordinal rules and the house rules, which he has to follow and to fulfill. However, if he does not follow these from now on, then the statutory term is to be given to him as a time to reflect and to change, after which he is to be excluded from the group with a failure to follow the rules, in accordance with the statute articles which state that the center must remain closed to him in the future. Billy says but I cannot give him the report to read because your order is that the reports may only be handed over to the group members once a month so that with respect to this, more order would finally prevail. Quetzal says that is correct, and this rule should also not be broken without exception. But what can be done is that in important concerns, the chairperson can order the relevant group members to himself to read aloud the necessary details from the available reports in each case. However, without handing these reports over to the persons concerned for personal inspection. Nevertheless, this should only be handled in such a way in urgent cases, and Thomas is currently such an urgent case. Billy says then I acted wrong. Quetzal says how should I understand this? Billy says Thomas asked me whether he could examine the latest report pages. I then told him that this was not allowed duty or order that the reports may only be released once a month at the meetings. Quetzal says your explanation was correct and, thus, isn't wrong since Thomas is in his unreasonable and nearly childish rebels sense that he could personally demand from you that you must present the transmissions to him, which he will also address in his letter, as also the threat that he wants to take up a personal battle with me if I am not in accordance with his will. On my side, I think that such threats and demands are more than just vicious and destructive and could only find a corresponding punishment, which falls, however, into the judicial power of the group's board of directors. 
Such degeneration simply can no longer be tolerated in the group because this inevitably led to new destruction, as was ever the case. Especially now, because in the group, very much has fundamentally changed the positive, and every single member of our group and also all group members endeavor very joyfully, which is why such rebellious and material destroying agitations may not appear again or even be tolerated. And to suggest to you all and to give you the order to speak about this at some other time with Engel but as a chairperson is why I have come again so quickly. And Engelbert should regulate this matter with Thomas because as our chairperson, this is his task, together with the rest of the available board of directors. Billy says however, Thomas will unreasonably bring his connection with K into the field. Quetzal says nevertheless, your exception can be made, and moreover, Thomas knows the given rules just as well as every other group member. Billy says but then, I have a question how do you handle such cases on error? Quetzal says we know of no such problems because every human being on our world abides by the unwritten laws and commandments. Billy says and how do they see it when two humans are good for each other, as they say? Quetzal says they say the two people who come together and suppose that they can develop deeper feelings for each other have to determine during the time of three years, whether these feelings are actually existent or not. After this time, they are examined by authoritative experts of the matter, and then after that, with a mutual logical consistency of feelings, love, etc., the two can be joined together in marriage. The period of three years is divided in such a way that the two see each other once for several hours every seven days, depending on time availability spending this time personally and alone at their own discretion, but it is absolutely excluded that they spend this time sleeping with each other or even having sexual relations. Such action is only allowed when the safety audit proves that they will close the covenant of marriage, which will not be the case with Thomas and Kay if two such people perform an activity weekly that always or occasionally brings them together during time time of seven days then nothing is to be objected, but at the same time, a personal interaction isn't allowed. The reason is that each of the two is always to have time during six days to rework and thoroughly consider all insights and experiences that took place on the seventh day. In addition, a 12-month separation time comes after two years, during which the two may not see each other. As a rule, they work on different planets during this time, in order to maintain enough distance and to have time to think about it. Only then follows the aforementioned examination. Other innocent physical contacts as well as communicative forms are allowed at any time, of course. Billy says I think that this regulation is very valuable. This might also work on Earth if the person of the Earth thinks a bit rationally. Quetzal says that is correct, only the Earth people can, unfortunately, be guided very often by wrongly produced and wrongly thought up feelings, by which they often become of the confused and incomprehensible notion that they could not live any more without that person whom they have chosen as a partner. And here begins the crux of the matter the earth person wrongly chooses partners for himself, which leads to divorces in more than 50% of all cases. But the law of love says that in each case, those partners should find themselves and determine for themselves through true feelings in life, according to vibrations that they have for each other. Billy says that is clear to me and also to most of our group. But with the majority of mankind, confusion still reigns. Quetzal says this is known to me but not only in this respect because even in relations to sexual interests, partly confusing views prevail. It is even believed that sexual relations will only really emerge when the chosen partners are suitable for each other. This, however, is a very wicked and misleading fallacy of wrong thinking and wrong understanding. Ironically, sexual relations call forth malignant, deceptive feelings in the human, which he produces himself by thoughts of desire. Particularly with female life forms, this very often leads to a dependence on the suitable partner because they draw wrong conclusions through their erroneously produced feelings and become confident that their ex-partner is the right one. 
In truth, sexual relations are only correct if clarity rules in every form with regard to love, feelings, and sensations, etc. and if a lifelong partnership in the form of a marital union is certain. Only then, if the sexual relationship is taken up and carried out, does it form the crown of love in the form of copulative fulfillment. Billy says you said that wonderfully. That could be from Semiaza or Manara. Quetzal says we men can also say the right words about these matters. Billy says I also just noticed that. Unfortunately, on earth, that is not possible. Quetzal says I would not maintain that because the earth person is also developed so far that there are men who can truly express these matters in good words. But now, my friend, it's back to the time that I have my tasks and, therefore, must leave you. Billy says then farewell, my friend, and very loving gratitude. Quetzal says until we meet again, I will already come again in a short time. The End <laughs>